When you meet someone you don't know, what do you say? Who are you? What do you do? Where do you come from? Can you imagine walking into the grocery store and going up to the clerk and saying, who do people say that I am? Or, who do you say that I am? Today's Gospel story and Jesus asking that question is meant for people who had come to know Jesus and for some who were, weren't sure what he was all about. Today we are asked the same question. We are familiar with all the stories of Jesus, aren't we? We can go through any of the Gospels and all of you could tell me one or two or three or four or five stories. We're all familiar with those stories, but maybe even we are still trying to figure out what Jesus is all about, especially in the contemporary world. It's so easy for us to talk about heaven, to talk about angels, to talk about God, but for some people, it's like talking about something unreal, isn't it? After all, we don't see heaven, we don't see angels, we don't see God as such the way we see, or at least the, the same way that we see money or food or clothing. So the question today is about how do we convince people outside of our community or even inside this community, how do we convince them that the spiritual world or the inner world of ourselves, that aspect of our lives, that, that, that very personal part of our life that's inside, how do we convince people that that spiritual life, that spirit of God present in our lives, that breathed life into us, is as real as the material world? as is real as money, food, or clothes. So the question is, how do we present Jesus? How do we, that's in the plural, how do we as a community present Jesus? How do we represent Jesus to this world? How do we represent Jesus to this world? In the days that Jesus walked the streets of Galilee or Jerusalem, people came into contact with Jesus and they knew they were in the presence of someone very special. You remember the woman at the well? After Jesus talked to him, after Jesus talked to her, what did she say? I've never met anybody like this. And then I think of Zacchaeus who ran up into the tree and, and was overwhelmed by meeting, being able to meet this person this encounter of Jesus, with Jesus. Or I think of the lepers who came back and one gave thanks, so overwhelmed in thanksgiving and gratitude for what Jesus had done. Or we think of the blind man who said, no, he was a prophet. No, he was this. No, he was he's the Messiah. The woman who washed his feet and dried his feet with her hair Jesus' words and actions, the very quality of his life, being able to be in his presence, opened their eyes to the reality of God. They came to understand God by meeting Jesus. They understood God's compassion. They understood God's goodness. They understood God's love. They understood God's mercy. And they saw it in the person of Jesus. It was present in the person of Jesus. It was real in the person of Jesus. It was tangible in the person of Jesus. And somehow that was able to touch the deepest part of their life and transform them and change them. And, and they were touched below the surface of their life. 
It went below beyond food and clothing and shelter and money. Today, people are in need of that same encounter. And so when we look at the mission and ministry of the church, the job of this community, the job of the church itself, the job of our diocese, the job of the church around the world, is to enable that encounter with Jesus to take place. It's our job. It's in the plural. It's our job to do that. And so people, when they encounter us either here or out there, they should experience something about the quality of our lives. They should be able to see something in the quality of our lives that gets their attention. That says, oh, there's something real about this person. There's something real about this community. There's something real about this church. There's a presence in this church. There's a presence in this community. There's a presence in those people where I, I, I understand, I see the reality and the beauty of God. So who do people say that I am? Who do people say that we are? Do they really encounter the body of Christ in the presence of Christ when they meet us? Now, Peter was given the keys of the kingdom. Remember that? He was given the keys of the kingdom. Jesus said, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And now we hold those keys. We hold those keys as a community. And the greatest one of those keys is the key to the cross. It's the cross. The cross is the key. So we hear in the gospel today, unless we're willing to take up that cross, but that's the key to our life. As I've told you before, there's no easy way around the cross. There's no bypass around Jerusalem. We have to go right through it. So we have to open for others through the cross, carrying our own cross. We have to open for others by being the very presence of God. We have to open for others the words and the actions of God and the reality of God that's in us. The reality of God that's right with us, in, in us. So who do people say that we are? A lot of answers. Some pretty good ones. Some we could say, some say we're Elijah, some say we're John the Baptist, some say we're one of the great prophets. But if we answer, if we answer, and if we hear that answer, you are the Christ, you are the Christ, there's real implications on what we do here and what we do out there. And so it comes to it down to a decision that we have to make. Who do people say that we are? Answering that question will change the reason we come here. The reason we come here. And then we will never be quite the same, either in here or out there. God bless you.